Hello and welcome to lesson 14 on classification. This is part of topic 6 biology, inheritance, variation and evolution and it's for both combined and triple science students. Okay, so during this lesson we're going to look at ways we classify organisms using a given system and then we're going to describe how classification systems have changed over time. So, antibiotic resistance can occur because mutations of bacterial pathogens can produce new strains. These strains are just produced by mutations, but these new strains may be resistant to antibiotics, and so when antibiotics are taken, they are not killed. They survive, reproduce, and the population of that resistant strain gets bigger, the resistant strain then spreads because people don't have any immunity to it, so there is no effective treatment. Ways it can be prevented, well, we talked in the last lesson about the reduction of the use of antibiotics, only prescribing antibiotics for really serious illnesses, not for minor illnesses, never prescribing them for viral illnesses, such as ear infections or flu, because they're not effective anyway. Always ensuring that people finish the course of antibiotics to ensure all the bacterial pathogens have been destroyed and there's none left that can then mutate into a new strain. And a better understanding of illnesses such as MRSA, which are caused by resistant antibiotics, better hygiene in hospitals, more hand washing, better overall sterilisation of equipment. So that was just a quick reminder to what we did last lesson. So looking at classification then, traditionally organisms have been classified according to a system first proposed in the 1700s by a man called Carl Linnaeus. This system is known as the Linnaean system and its groups of living things are grouped according to their characteristics and their structures. So the Linnaean system comes from the name of the person who came up with the system, Carl Linnaeus. It's Carl Linnaeus' Linnaean system introduced lots of new terminology. He classified organisms into many different groups. The biggest group was the kingdom, followed by the phylum, the class, the order, the family, the genus and then the species and this is known as the order of classification within the Linnaean system. When Linnaeus first devised his classification systems the number of known types of living things was much smaller than it is today. In the beginning he suggested just two kingdoms, animals and plants. Kingdoms contain lots of organisms with many differences, but a few important similarities. For example, all animals move their bodies about during at least parts of their life cycle, and their cells do not have cellulose cell walls. However, plants do not move their whole bodies about, and their cells do have cellulose cell walls. Also, some plants contain chloroplasts full of chlorophyll, which is used for photosynthesis. Now scientists know of many more organisms, we also know much more about them. Developments in microscopes have enabled scientists to compare the internal structures of cells. They also know a great deal more about the biochemistry of different organisms. You can even compare the genomes of organisms. As a result, classification systems have changed. And at one stage, scientists used five kingdoms to classify organisms. These kingdoms were animals, so all multicellular animals, plants, all green plants, fungi, such as moulds, mushrooms and yeast, prokaryotes, bacteria and blue-green algae, and protista, things like amoeba and pharmacium. Now over recent years, it's even been started, gradually accepted that this five kingdom model might actually be a six kingdom model. Because as more and more species have been found, 
We're now considering whether the prokaryotic group should be split into two groups to include ancient bacteria-like organisms and new bacteria, the normal bacteria we might grow in a school lab. So it's still, as we develop more and more knowledge and more and more understanding of living creatures, these classification systems are evolving. But Linnaeus come up with these five kingdoms and you need to have an understanding of what Linnaeus's five kingdoms were. So you might want to pause the video here and make a note of those five kingdoms. Now, these words, this order of classification that we met on the last slide, it's really important that you know kingdom's the biggest group and species is the smallest group and the order of size within that. So I'm going to give you two minutes to think of a rhyme that you can think of to help you remember that order. And remember, you can use the first letters and you can see what you can come up with. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do the same, see what I can come up with. And in two minutes, I'll share my ideas with you. So two minutes starting now, off you go. Okay, what did you come up with? I've struggled a little bit. I've come up with knights, play, chess or football, good sports. I think if I had a little bit longer I could come up with something better. But you need to try and think of a way that you can remember that order for classification and you remember kingdoms is the biggest group and species is the smallest. Okay, so the example I've got for you, kangaroos punch children on family game shows. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So if you struggle to come up with one of your own, you might choose to use mine, you might want to use that one. Kangaroos punch children on family game shows. Okay, the binomial naming system is written in Latin and is used globally in classification to avoid any confusion over names. So the reason why we need a system that is used globally is so the huge variety of living things which exist on the planet can be identified and named in the same way all over the world. If they had different names in every different language, it would make it impossible for a biologist to know what one what organism another biologist in another part of the world was talking about. So it's really important that we have this consistent way of naming living things. 
The way the problem is solved is because every organism has a scientific name given using a binomial system. And again, this binomial system was put forward and is stuck by this chap, Carl Linnaeus. Binomial means two names. As bicycles got two wheels, B-I, binomial means two names. The two names of an organism are in Latin and they give the genus and the species of the organism. Even in the time of Linnaeus, Latin was no longer spoken, but was the language of scholars everywhere. This meant no one was offended because their language was not chosen and yet most people could still understand the names regardless of the language they spoke. So some simple rules for writing names for the names of living things. The first name is written by using the name of the genus to which the organism belongs and it's always written with a capital letter. The second name is the name of the species to which the organism belongs and it always starts with a lower case letter and the two names are underlined if they are written by hand and written in italics if they are printed. So the example we've got on this slide is Homo sapiens, the genus they belong to is Homo and the species is sapiens. Would be, we use the genus and the species. So the bionormal name for the house cat would be Felis cactus. Felis would need a capital F, cactus would have a lower case C and obviously if you're handwriting it you should then underline those two words. Okay, killer whale then would be Orcinus, Occa. And again, Orcinus should have a capital O, Occa should be lowercase o, but both words should be underlined. And the dog, Canis familiarius. And Canis has already got a capital C, familiarius has already got a lowercase f, and again, it should be underlined. Then I asked you if a dog and a wolf can breed successfully. Well, let's remember what has to happen for a species to breed successfully. The species has to breed successfully but, and give birth to offspring that are fertile or offspring that can go on to have offspring that can successfully breed themselves. So a species is the smallest group of clearly identified living organisms in Linnaeus's classification system. Members of the same species are very similar and a species is a group of organisms that can breed together successfully. So if you look at the wolf and the dog, the wolf is in the species lupus, but the dog is in the species familiarius. So they are different species, so they would not be able to successfully breed together. It doesn't matter that they're in the same kingdom, the same phylum, the same class, the same order, the same family and the same genus. They are in different species, so they would not be able to successfully breed together. Okay, so what is the definition then of a species? And I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to see if you can come up with it. We've just looked at it and we have mentioned it in a previous lesson. Okay, so the definition of a species is a group of organisms that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Classification systems change over time. 
and we thought about this earlier on in this video. I just want you to, I'm just going to give you one minute now to think about why this might be and reflect on what I spoke to you about earlier on. So why might classification systems have to change over time? One minute. Okay, so what we managed to come up with. So we might have new discoveries, discover new species, new animals, new plants, new bacteria. We might make new observations of the behaviours or the habits of some of those new species or some existing species. We might be an improvement of microscopes so we can find out more about the microscopic detail of the cells and the structures inside the bodies of certain species of living things. We might also be able to better observe biochemical processes such as the DNA sequence analysis or RNA sequence analysis and find out more about the species that we already know about or more about species that are new to us. So as technology develops, as microscopes develop, as we find more species of plants and animals, classification systems may have to change to accommodate these new pieces of knowledge that we gather. So the Linnaean system classifies organisms based on their structure and characteristics. Let's see now if what we did earlier has worked. Can you put these groups into the correct order? And I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, have you managed? So you should have started off by having kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Remember, kangaroos punch children on family game shows. Okay. A second scientist is involved in classification then because in 1990 this chap, Carl Wosey, proposed a three domain system. He did this using evidence gathered from new chemical analysis techniques such as RNA sequencing analysis. He found that in some cases species thought to be closely related in traditional classification systems are in fact not as closely related as we perhaps first thought. So the idea of the classification system that Carl Linnaeus had come up with started to change a little bit. Now Carl Wosey decided that all organisms fitted into three domains, eukaryota, archaea and bacteria. And within these different groups, he again agreed with the original model of having the seven groups on the left hand side, starting with kingdom, going down to species. And he agreed that there were further groups within the two groups on the right. So eukaryota, fungi, plants, animals, protists, archaea, primitive bacteria, and then this idea of true bacteria. So it was a different idea, a new idea, and what it did was it turned the five kingdoms that Carl Linnaeus had come up with 
into six kingdoms. So Carl Linnaeus thought it was prokaryotes, protists, fungi, plants and animals. This new model suggested by Woosey then subdivided the eukaryotes into these two groups. Sorry, the prokaryotes into further two groups, the archaea and the eubacteria or the true bacteria as it's sometimes called. Okay, so you don't really need to know which theory people agreed with and things, you just have to have an awareness that both of these scientists were involved. Carl Woosey's advances on Carl Linnaeus's model were due to additional evidence available from chemical analysis and they changed the idea from being a binomial system into a system which became a three domain system. The naming of the organism still stayed the same but it was an advancement on the original work by Carl Linnaeus. It didn't replace it, it just added further details to it. So we're going to finish off by having a look at some exam questions. So this exam question is out of two marks. I'm not going to read it to you, but I am going to give you two minutes to complete it starting now. Okay, so scientists have removed microorganisms from inside rocks in caves in Mexico. The microorganisms have been trapped there for between 10,000 and 50,000 years. The caves are dark, very hot, humid and acidic. Why are these microorganisms called extremophiles? Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you if you've forgotten or if you need a recap is the definition of an extremophile. So an extremophile is an organism that is adapted to live in extreme conditions such as high temperatures, high pressures or high salt concentration. So the two boxes you should have ticked using the information in the question are high temperatures because it said it's very hot and acidic. Lots of climates all over the world are humid and many climates are dark, but these aren't classed as extreme conditions. The very hot and the acidic are classed as extreme conditions. Okay, the next question's then. I'm going to give you four minutes this time. So we've got something about the three domain system at the top and I want you to read the whole question and then it's asking you to think about the microorganisms from the caves that were mentioned earlier. So I'm going to give you four minutes starting now.
that's half your time gone. Two minutes remaining. Okay, 30 seconds. If you have finished, I think it'd be useful in your notes to write out these two questions because really there isn't a lot more that they can ask you about classification and these questions are about as hard as it's going to get. If you're still writing your answers, you can always pause the video when we've gone through the answers and make a note of them there. Okay, time's up. So, Carl Wosey developed the three domain system of classification. Describe it. So it wants you to talk about the fact that Carl Wosey's three domain system was based on evidence from chemical DNA, or just based on DNA and you would have got the mark. It wanted you to say that it added further groups into the bacteria. So it split bacteria into this idea of true bacteria and simple or primitive bacteria. And if you're struggling with some of the biological words, you can just talk about primitive or simple bacteria and true bacteria. Whereas previous to this, Carl Linnaeus' system just talked about bacteria as a bigger group. So it further divided the prokaryota group into two further groups, this primitive or simple bacteria and this true bacteria. It also included eukaryota, which is protists, fungi, plants and animals. So it's this idea that now you've got three groups, you've got primitive or simple bacteria, true bacteria and then everything else, the eukaryota, which includes protists, fungi, plants and animals. The second part of this question talks about the microorganisms from the caves being classified as belonging to the Archaea domain of the three domain system. And it asked you to suggest why. Now it's this idea that these microorganisms live in very extreme conditions or they are extremophiles. And if you'd have just put the word extremophiles, you'd have got the mark. So it's just about talking about these microorganisms as being extremophiles and recognising that because they're extremophiles, they must be bacteria that is pretty simple or primitive. So you want to pause the video, get those questions down and get those answers down. I think it'd be really useful to have as your notes. Okay, six quick fire questions then. And as we go, I want you to keep a tally of your score. So who proposed the original classification system? What was the name of this new system? And what evidence was there to support it? So one minute starting now.
Okay. So, Carl Linnaeus proposed the original classification system. The name of the system was a five kingdom classification system, and the evidence to support this discovery was classification according to physical characteristics. And again, it would be useful if you have those questions and answers down in your notes. So if you want to pause the video before we go on to the last questions, that might be a good idea. Okay, question four then. Who proposed a new classification system more recently in 1990? What was the name of this system? And what evidence was there to support this discovery? One minute again, starting now. OK, so this time we're talking about Carl Woese. And you know that as soon as you see 1990 or more recently, it's not talking about Carl Linnaeus, it's talking now about Carl Woese. The new system was a three domain system. And this time, because it was more recently, the evidence was this chemical analysis techniques such as RNA sequence analysis. So again, if you pause the video, you can use those second block of three questions to complete your notes for this lesson. So Carl Linnaeus proposed the original classification system called the Five Kingdom Classification System. This system relied on physical characteristics and Carl Rosie proposed a new classification system in 1990 called the Three Domain System. The evidence that he used to support his system was chemical analysis techniques such as RNA sequence analysis. So there are your notes for this lesson. Well done. Some difficult terminology, but if you can remember the order of the kingdoms and the differences between the two systems, there's not actually that much else they can ask you in the exam. 